In this video, I'm gonna talk about Yakuza 0, Blackjack, Mahjong, Fantasy Zone, Darts, Fishing, Poker, Silo, Outrun, Pool, Bowling, Roulette, Space Harrier, Batting, Karaoke, Chohan, Baccarat, Telephone Club, Koi Koi, Catfight, Shogi, Oiko Chabu, UFO Catcher, Disco Club, Pocket Racers, and Super Hang On! <gasps> The year is 1988, we are still 10 years away from The Undertaker throwing mankind off hell in a cell, and in the meantime the world is desperate for heroes. Enter Kazuma Kiryu, a man that puts an end to all men, street brawler extraordinaire, and champion of literally every extracurricular activity you have ever done in school. A framing for murder is all he needs to transform from a simple street thug to a living god who does everything short of cooking dinner. Meanwhile, some random dude called Goro Majima manages a cabaret like the random dude he is, until shit hits the fan like any good self-respecting video game. His gameplay is largely the same as Kiryu, and his bits are more for the story exposition than anything else, but he's got his own set of perks and fighting styles, and he is as full-fledged a playable character as Kiryu is. Everything is so Japanese it is pouring by the gallons with its own brand of humor, and when you marry this to Sega's usual reputation of being the strange kid in the family, you know that you are in for an exotic treat. The mere act of picking up the phone is turned into a dramatic moment of serious business. Everything that Kiryu does is accomplished with the intensity of a honeymoon fuck. Everything that Majima does is endowed with the smoothness of a baby's ass. In a way, Kiryu is a perfect representation of the average gamer's inflated inner self, bursting with potential that begs for an anime excuse to come on out, respected and feared by all who cross his path, and tragically inexperienced with romance. Majima is who the average gamer wishes he could be, fully in control of the situation, his inner beast unleashed, and tragically declining the advances of the dozens of women who fall for him, for he is a lone hero cursed by his dark past. This game is so completely overstuffed with quirks and features that Doug Demuro spontaneously ejaculated on release day, and he is still trying to figure out what the hell happened. Anyone who plays Yakuza 0 for nothing but the main story is the guy who attempts to order a hamburger steak at McDonald's because he does not understand that the bun and the condiments contribute to the flavor. He also probably drives a Hyundai Accent with a CVT that he bought new for the sticker price. I recommend you steer clear of these people and disacknowledge their existence. Your main fare is to wander the street from one story point to another while fighting all sorts of ruffians and delinquents along the way but you will do well to get pleasantly lost into the two dozen minigames placed all over town. You will spend far more time on the latter than the former. Battles are very common, but you quickly gain the option of running away from common pursuers or bribing your way out if you are not in the mood for horseplay. Minigames include a fair amount of gambling, some rhythm gaming, and emulation of Sega's arcade classics with an arcade difficulty. If you are in any way serious about getting a high score in these, you will be dropping a lot of coins into the arcade. Fortunately, almost all minigames require no more than a symbolic fee for playing, to the tune of an arcade run being a hundred yen, when you can earn hundreds of thousands by beating on a few punks outside. Naturally, the minigames are not as fully developed as what you would get in a complete game dedicated to only this, but they are plenty good enough for some casual gaming. A friend can play against you in those without needing an entire day to learn the controls and subtleties. You even have an option in the main menu just for playing these minigames with a friend. Everything that pertains to the main story is about as gritty and serious as one can imagine, taking all the elements of a sordid plotline in Japan's lawless underground and blending until smooth. You will hate the antagonists and love every second of it. Meanwhile, everything that is outside of the main story is a balls-to-the-wall experience of absolute silliness that includes joining a religious cult, meeting the most pussy-ass bitch rock band in the universe, and teaching a dominatrix how to insult people in front of children. Take the main story, the side quests, and the minigames, put all of this together, and there is enough content to keep you busy for well over 200 hours. That is, if you give your attention to about four-fifths of the available content, skipping over the parts you do not feel like doing. I personally would rather put a bullet in my head than play Baccarat, but who knows, perhaps somebody else in the world masturbates to this gambling game. If you are one of these people, kindly let me know so that I may sterilize you.
Controls change depending on the situation, but whenever in a fight, you have access to a light punch button, heavy punch button, grab slash utility button, block button, dodge button, lock target button, and taunt button. Depending on opportunities far more numerous than China's entire population, you can perform special actions of excessive violence that would send Alex the Large blushing with envy. You will want to tell your kid not to try these moves at home. You can equip some weapons if you feel like it, but you can get by with your fists alone. That said, weapons are cheap and plentiful, and they have their own set of interesting moves and special ultra-violent actions. I personally recommend equipping the Salt Shaker. You can also perform some basic crafting and send agents on missions to retrieve materials and better, fancier, sillier weapons. Music is something that should have escaped notice, except that the sound man snorted three lines of coke before working on this game and graced us with a soundtrack more bombastic than Kim Kardashian's two ass cheeks. The energy poured into the music makes every fight memorable, and every moment of tension feel like the apocalypse is about to happen. I have to give it to Sega, they know how to make every interface sound like a winning pachinko machine. There's always a satisfying click and ding to every button you press. Developers can take a lesson here, Yakuza 0 always expands. The more you progress through the story, the more mini-games that open up for you. And when you are done with the main story, you get to free roam as you please. There is none of this you cannot ever go back here bullshit. It sounds like the game is telling you that sometimes, but in reality it just means that you will be away for a while and will temporarily have no access to the mini-games until you complete that part of the story. In that vein, it means that there is no specific pressure to max everything out before a major plot point, but I will admit that it can help a fair deal. I also recommend carrying a handful of healing items with you at all times. And anyway, if your inventory is full, the excess is always sent to your stash, so nothing is ever lost and items are cheap. Carrying too much is better than not carrying enough, so go crazy. There is so much to do and so much to see that it would not be realistic for anyone to expect a player to consume all of the content. There is no shame in disregarding the bits that do not suit you. Not everyone likes everything, and those who do consume everything are generally obese and mentally unstable, both of which you can see and smell from a mile away. Just get in there, grab what suits your mood for the day, and come on back out. Vary the experience with each sitting, listen to your heart. In short, this game is an all-you-can-eat buffet!